Well, good morning, everybody. I've got a helper today. Uh, we have our resident hunter who's going to do a little target practice. So Brian is here with us, and he's going to take a couple shots at his target. But I want to ask him a couple questions before we get into Psalm 64. So Brian, uh, why, why is it important that you have patience and self-control uh, when you are uh, bow hunting in October? Well, basically, you'll be sitting in your tree stand a lot of times for two or three hours without seeing anything, and the average hunter would just get down and go home. So you just have to be patient and be willing to wait for your animals to come by, and then you need to have self-control when you're taking the shot and just being ready. Okay, well, you want to go on YouTube here and... Uh, See if you can hit a shot. It's a, it's a decent range, but we're going to get a, a, a good angle here. might be embarrassing if I miss. That's all right. We're going to trust you that you know what you're doing. All right. I, I think it's down. Okay. Let's see if you can go two for two here. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get a little closer. We'll show you how good of a shot that was. Okay, let's go check this out. Go see how we did with the arrows here. And then we're going to tie this in with Psalm 64, which speaks of arrows in a different way. But what do you think? We having venison tomorrow? I think, I think we did pretty well here. So I'm going to pass the camera over to Brian. He doesn't have to do any talking anymore. I'm sure he's happy about that. <laughs> Very. There we are. So we've got these arrows here. But Psalm 64, it, it approaches it from a different vantage point, not be the one that is shooting arrows, but the one that's being shot at with arrows. So I want to focus now on those same thing, patience, self-control, but then also joy. So Brian, I'm guessing if you, uh, October 2, you're out there and you got a deer, heart shot, and it fell right over, you had to trace it, oh, maybe four steps. You're jumping up and down, right? Absolutely. You're excited. Yes. So patience, self-control, and joy, but in the middle of hard circumstances. The psalmist begins, Hear me, O God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. There is a problem and there is a threat. Well, what is the threat in particular? It says there are evil men who are conspiring, and they sharpen their tongues. So the weapon isn't a bow and arrow, but it's words. But they aim their words like deadly arrows. So what do we do here when people are aiming their words at us like deadly arrows? Because uh, the whole adage of sticks and stones may break my bones, but burns will never hurt me. That's exactly wrong. We've all know that. We've all lived it. Uh, we can get scraped and wounded, but someone who says something that can really pierce our heart. So, patience. This is talking about big picture uh, the work of the enemy to conspire against the people of God. We're encouraged here to have patience. Why? Why should we have patience? Verse 7, it says, But God will shoot them with arrows, and suddenly they will be struck down. Not in the literal sense, but verse 8 says, He will turn their own tongues against them. That is a reminder that those who are attacked with words, that God will vindicate his people. And those who plot evil, their own plots will turn against them. There is that final judgment and that final accountability. So we can have patience. The second thing, self-control. Now, Brian wasn't trembling and shaking, but when someone says something that really hurts us, maybe we're trembling and we're shaking, and we want to we lash right back. So we want to have self-control with our own tongue, but one of the tricks of the devil is, is to get God's people to use their own words to tear each other down. Now that might come in different ways. One being gossip. You want to take something that someone says and you, and you have all these whispers and things and it ends up really, really hurting people. Secondly, it's when we, when we think the worst of somebody, we don't give someone the benefit of the doubt and the first word out of our mouth is something that's an attack rather than seeking to understand where they're coming from. So if we're going to be part of God's people filled with the Spirit, uh, we want to make sure that our, our own words are kind and gentle, and we've given some thought to them before they actually come out of our mouth. But now the third one, 
Let's think about joy. Get a deer, you're excited, you have joy. In the Sermon on the Mount, at the end of the Beatitudes, Jesus said, consider it pure joy when people say all kinds of evil things against you. Not just because they said evil things and not because your conduct was terrible, but when people say evil things about you because of Christ, because you are a follower of Jesus Christ, and you are living in such a way that you are honoring Jesus Christ with your life, and yet those words are coming at you, consider it pure joy. The psalm ends saying this, that all of humankind will fear, they will proclaim the works of God, they will ponder what is done, that at the end when Christ returns, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, and let the righteous rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Our identity, it's in Christ. Our eternity is kept in heaven for us. So people giving us a hard time, it shouldn't ruin our day. And I get the reality of it. It's not fun uh, to be picked on and teased as a younger person or to be mocked online or to be uh, looked down upon because you're a Christian. I get that. But consider it pure joy because you have all the promises of God. Everything that God says to you, those are the words that matter. And the words that Jesus said that you will be blessed. I'm making a place for you. Uh, you will have everything that you need in me one day. So no matter what arrows are coming our way, we can rejoice knowing that the Lord has heard our complaint when days are hard and he will vindicate his people at the end. So blessings to you this week. And if you're a hunter, get out there and practice. Join Brian, have a little <laughs> celebration, sportsman dinner, uh, sometime six months from now. Thanks, everybody.